Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. If you're not new to the channel, you'll know that I do have a very slight coffee addiction and I've covered a number of studies showing the health benefits of consuming coffee. This is another study that shows measurable effects of drinking a certain amount of coffee during the day. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and see what this latest study on consuming coffee and the benefits of consuming coffee has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Paul Schattenberg of the Texas A&M University, where he covers a study that was published in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences that looked into the health benefits of coffee consumption with regard to cancer and other diseases. And there are links in the description below to the study and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. Coffee is one of the world's most widely consumed beverages and numerous studies have shown that having higher coffee consumption is linked to decreased rates of mortality as well as decreased rates of neurological and metabolic diseases including Parkinson's, cardiovascular disease and also type 2 diabetes. This new study adds to that body of evidence by saying that having a second cup may actually be extremely beneficial for regular coffee drinkers. Let's jump in and find out why. Stephen Safe, PhD, Professor of Toxicology at Texas A&M University and co-author of the paper said, there is evidence that higher coffee consumption is associated with lower rates of colon and rectal cancer, as well as breast, endometrial and other cancers, although there are conflicting reports on its benefits for some of these cancers. Now, among the studies noted in this review was an examination into the role of the aryl hydrocarbon receptor known as AHR in mediating the effects of coffee in the colon. The research was conducted in the SAFE lab and the Chapkin lab at the Texas A&M University. Two of the primary contributors to the study were Professor Chapkin and Laurie Davison, PhD. She is a Department of Nutrition researcher who works in the Chapkin lab. Professor Robert Chapkin, head of the Chapkin lab at Texas A&M University said, the mechanisms associated with the chemo preventive or chemotherapeutic effects of more than 1,000 individual compounds in roasted coffee are complex and may vary with different diseases. Some of these mechanisms may be related to pathways that target oxidative stress or pathways that induce reactive oxygen species, also known as ROS, to kill diseased cells. There is also evidence for the involvement of receptors in addition to contributions from epigenetic pathways and also the gut microbiome. Professor Chapkin stated that as part of our study using genetically modified cell lines, mouse colonic organoids and transgenic mouse models, we wanted to further elucidate the mechanisms that would facilitate the potential future clinical applications of coffee extracts. The review noted that although roasted coffee beans and brewed coffee contain high levels of caffeine, there are several hundred individual phytochemical derived compounds in coffee. These compounds include chlorogenic acid, alkaloids, vitamins, and even some metals. Other compounds include the flavonoid quercetin, caffeine, the alkaloid beta carboline, and cafirostrol. The research showed the mechanisms of action of coffee are complex and dependent on the effects of its constituents, including chlorogenic acid, polyphenols, terpenoids, alkaloids, and other phytochemicals. Laura Davidson, PhD, from the Department of Nutrition at Texas A&M University said, we also found evidence that the antioxidant activity of coffee, which activates the nuclear factor erythroid 2 related factor 2 or NRF2, may be an important mechanism of action. But 
since NRF2 exhibits both health protective and drug resistant activities, other cell context dependent factors may also be important. Dr. Davison also noted they'd found evidence that the protective effects of coffee in the gut decreased the risk of colon cancer, which she said may be due to its activity as an aryl hydrocarbon ligand. This hydrocarbon receptor, AHR, is a transcription factor that regulates our gene expression. The study also demonstrated that roasted coffee derived extracts function in part by activating AHR. In a mouse model, coffee induced several AHR dependent responses in the intestine. These included gene expression, inhibition of intestinal stem cell enriched organoid growth and the inhibition of intestinal barrier damage. Professor Chapkin noted that overall, these mechanisms in constant with possible epigenetic pathways and the modulation of gut microbiota and gut microbial metabolites contribute to the health benefits of higher coffee consumption. Now, the researchers also discovered that some coffee components bind the orphan nuclear receptor NR4A1 to the interactions with the AHR receptor. The NH4A1 receptor is a key factor in multiple diseases, such as arthritis, inflammation, cancer, and cardiovascular disease. And a high NR4A1 expression is also associated with some types of breast cancer. Professor Safe noted that a major target for cancer chemotherapy includes specific protein transcription factors, the aryl hydrocarbon receptor, the estrogen receptor, and NR4A1. And he says that his lab has ongoing collaborations focused on endometriosis, Parkinson's disease, and learning and memory. We have been very interested in the therapeutic impact of coffee consumption on many of these diseases and how it may improve human health. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. So I've reviewed 10 studies so far. This is number 11 on the health benefits of coffee. This now adds to the growing body of evidence that shows between two to three cups of coffee a day has got measurable health benefits. The only real negative downside that I've found so far in these 11 studies is that coffee can interrupt certain people's sleep patterns. Um, I think you can get around this by either drinking decaf after about noon or drinking decaf all day. I know that if I drink full coffee, proper coffee with full caffeine uh, after about three, two or three o'clock in the afternoon, my deep sleep in particular is disrupted. And that's something I certainly don't want to do. So it's only decaf in the afternoon for me. Let me in the comments below, do you drink coffee for the health benefits or do you only do it because you like the taste? Or now, because of these 11 studies, do you drink it because you know you're getting health benefits as well as great taste?